Day 34, welcome in. Uh, today is Leviticus 1 through 3 and Hebrews 2. Leviticus 1, the Lord called Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, that he may be accepted before the Lord. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Then he shall kill the bull before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priests, shall bring the blood and throw the blood against the sides of the altar that is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. And the sons of Aaron and the priests shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall arrange the pieces, the head, and the fat on the wood that is on the fire on the altar. But its entrails and its legs he shall wash with water. And the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If his gift for a burnt offering is from the flock, from the sheep or goats, he shall bring a male without blemish, and he shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar. And he shall cut it into pieces with its head and its fat. And the priest shall arrange them on the wood that is on the fire on the altar. But the entrails and the legs he shall wash with water. And the priest shall offer it all of it and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If his offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or pigeons. And the priest shall bring it to the altar and wring off its head and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. He shall remove its crop with its contents and cast it beside the altar on the east side in, pla in the place for the ashes. He shall tear it open by its wings, but shall not sever it completely. And the priest shall burn it on the altar on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Leviticus 2. When anyone brings a grain offering as an offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour. He shall pour oil on it and some frankincense, then put frankincense on it, and bring it to Aaron's sons the priests. And he shall take from it a handful of fine flour and oil, with all of its frankincense, and the priest shall burn this as its memorial portion on the altar, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the Lord's food offerings. When you bring a grain offering baked in the oven as an offering, it shall be unleavened loaves of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers smeared with oil. And if your offering is a grain offered offering baked on a griddle, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mixed with oil. You shall break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. And if your offering is a grain offering cooked in a pan, it shall be made of fine flour and oil with oil. You shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the Lord, and when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar. And the priest shall take from the grain offering its memorial portion and burn this on the altar, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the Lord's food offerings. No grain offering that you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey as a food offering to the Lord. As an offering of first fruits, you may bring them to the Lord, but they shall not be offered on the altar for a pleasing aroma. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. If you offer a grain offering of the first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer the grain offering of your first fruits fresh ears, roasted with fire, crushed new grain. And you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. And the priest shall burn as its memorial portion some of the crushed grain and some of the oil with all of its frankincense. It is a food offering to the Lord. Leviticus 3. Excuse me. If his offering is a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offers an animal from the herd, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the offering and kill it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall throw the blood against the sides of the altar. And from the sacrifice of the peace offering as a food offering to the Lord, he shall offer the fat covering the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them at the loins, and the long lobe of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar on top of the burnt offering which is on the wood and the fire. 
It is a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord is an animal from the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offers a lamb for his offering, then he shall kill it. Then he shall offer it before the Lord. Uh, lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it in front of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar. Then from the sacrifice of the peace offering, he shall offer as a food offering to the Lord its fat. He shall remove the whole fat tail, cut off close to the backbone, and the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is on the entrails, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, at the loins, at the long lobe, and the long lobe of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. And the priest shall burn it on the altar as a food offering to the Lord. If his offering is a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord, and lay his hand on his head, and kill it in front of the tent of meeting. And the sons of Aaron shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar. Then he shall offer from it as his as his offering for a food offering to the Lord. The fat covering the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them at the loins and the long lobe of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. And the priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering with a pleasing aroma. All fat is the Lord's. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling places that you eat neither flat, fat nor blood. Okay, next is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Through an ar- Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up and above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Finally is Hebrews 2. Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. For it was not angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him uh, who who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with the glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory shall make the founder of thy salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham, Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every aspect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest and the servant of God 
to make propitiation for the sins of the people, for he himself has suffered when tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. Okay, so this passage, uh, all of the passages today, are pretty much about atonement. They're about uh, sanctification and sacrifice, right? So Leviticus is the um, instructions given to the Levites to be the priests of the people, the intermediaries between Israel and God were the Levites. And the Levites' main job was to make sacrifices to the Lord. And it was a, honestly, it was probably terrible, right? Like every day there's people bringing like animals in. You have to, if it's like a bird, you have to like wring its neck off. If it's um, anything else, you just kill it and then like spray its blood on the side of the like the altar. Like, you know, the movies whenever like you cut off like an animal or a person's head. I'm thinking of Kill Bill. And that's not, has no place, but like the blood like squirts out and you're like putting it on the sides of the altar and then you're like opening it up and digging around for like the liver and the kidneys and like washing it off. And then with the birds, you have to like splay the wings out, but you like don't sever it. And then you're just burning all of it and it just smells like blood and raw meat and like cooked meat. And uh, it's probably terrible, right? Every day, day in and day out. Um, but what the writer of Hebrews is saying, this is like the essential gospel presentation he's giving, is like Jesus. Well, okay, in Leviticus, it tells us that these this, the lamb that was sacrificed had to be perfect. It had to be without blemish. And in Hebrews, we're told that Jesus, the perfect son of God, uh, was the replacement for all of the sacrifice, right? And so it's... It's a miracle. It's the, the greatest miracle that he is the founder of our salvation. Um, and he calls us his brothers. Which is um, insane, right? Because one day we'll be with Christ. Um, and it's for that reason that he came. So that he could reconcile us back to him. And then we'll worship him for the rest of time. Right? Um, that's really all I have for today. I, it's kind of short to me, but I guess, you know, maybe brevity is good sometimes. So yeah, that's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow for the last one of this week. But yeah, thanks for tuning in.